Hello and welcome to this video on spontaneous change and the Gibbs free energy. At the end of this video you will be able to explain why, it's, why spontaneous change happens in the context of the second law of thermodynamics. Define the Gibbs free energy, explain what properties the Gibbs free energy shares with enthalpy and entropy, calculate the Gibbs free energy of reaction at a reference temperature and the Gibbs free, action, Gibbs free energy of reaction at any temperature. Now to start with we're going to look at a closed system that's at thermal equilibrium with its surroundings and undergoes some sort of change and as a result of that change exchanges heat with the surroundings. Now the second law says that uh, the entropy of the universe has to increase. So the change in entropy, entropy of my system plus the change in entropy of my surroundings uh, must be greater than zero. In terms of the heat transferred, then the change of entropy, entropy of my system minus the uh, incremental heat addition divided by T has to be greater than zero. Now for a constant volume system we can use the first law and say that this heat addition is simply equal to du. If we substitute this into the second law we get a new expression TDS minus du has to be greater than zero. So what this gives us is a new thermodynamic variable the Helmholtz free energy. So where, which is equal to U minus TS. So for a spontaneous change at a fixed temperature, DA has to be smaller than or equal to zero. Similarly, we can look at a system that's at a fixed pressure as opposed to a fixed volume. And so if we go back to the first law, then our heat addition becomes equal to DH in this case. And if we substitute that back into the entropy balance for the universe, then we can see that our criteria now becomes TDS minus DH is greater than zero. This leads to a new thermodynamic variable, the Gibbs free energy, so which is H minus TS. This is very, very important. So we'll be using the Gibbs free energy essentially for the rest of the course. Uh, and so very important. And so for the Gibbs free energy, our criteria now that becomes spontaneous change can happen if the change in Gibbs free energy is smaller than zero, i.e. negative. And so the Gibbs free energy and Helmholtz free energy are derived properties. So we've just defined them out of convenience, similar to enthalpy. They are state properties since they are a product of other state properties, namely internal energy, temperature, entropy and enthalpy. They have the same properties as other state functions, i.e. They, uh, they are path independent. And you can have a total Gibbs free energy, a specific Gibbs free energy and a molar Gibbs free energy. The same as what you can have for enthalpy, entropy and internal energy. Now there's no law that says that systems must progress to a lower state of energy. It's a very common misconception. What systems must progress towards is, is a lower Gibbs free energy, which is dictated by the second law of thermodynamics. So if the Gibbs free energy of a system decreases, that means that the entropy of the universe increases, which we know must always be the case. If the entropy doesn't increase, if the entropy of the universe doesn't increase, then a process is impossible. So to obey the second law, a system must progress to a lower free energy, never the reverse. Now you may have noticed that I've been talking about what is possible to do or what may be possible to do. The reason for this is that there's a kinetic consideration for all processes. This may make it impossible for something that is thermodynamically possible to happen in a finite time. Okay, so, so in thermodynamics we're always talking about what's possible to do. 
we need to understand the kinetics from, from other courses to be able to know whether it's actually practical to do or not. And so for the Gibbs free energy of reaction, we start with the definition of Gibbs free energy. We take a change in Gibbs free energy, so delta both sides. And then at a fixed temperature, at a particular temperature, we can then easily define what a Gibbs free energy is as a combination of the enthalpy of reaction and the entropy of reaction both of which we've already discussed previously and we know how to calculate. Because the Gibbs free energy is a product of enthalpy and entropy, it, can all, it also obeys Hess's law, where if we have the Gibbs free energy for reactions that add up to give us the reaction that we're interested in, then we can simply sub the Gibbs free energies of each of those reactions. An extension of Hess's law, just the same with enthalpy and just the same with entropy, is that then we can calculate the Gibbs free energy as a sum of the uh, stoichiometric coefficient times by the Gibbs free energy of formation. And so the Gibbs free energy of formation is defined in the same way as the enthalpy of formation where for an element forming its uh, stable phase the Gibbs free energy of formation is zero. Now as I said before you can calculate the Gibbs free energy of reaction just based on the enthalpy and entropy of reaction at a particular T. This equation here you can use at a range of temperatures as long as you're assuming that the enthalpy of reaction and the entropy of reaction are constant. Now if you need to calculate the Gibbs free energy of reaction at a different temperature and the enthalpy and entropy of reaction are not constant then all you need to do is simply apply what you've done previously with the enthalpies and the entropies of reactions. Calculate those first and then you're able to calculate the Gibbs free energy of reaction at the temperature that you're interested in. Now again I have to stress that this is what is possible to do. There's a kinetic consideration that we have to make before we make decisions. And so a good example here is that in principle diamonds aren't as thermodynamically favorable as graphite. So graphite is more stable than diamonds. In principle that's a spontaneous thing to happen. But you'll never ever see it happen because the kinetics of that happening are very very slow thankfully otherwise uh, lots of people will have wasted lots of money. So to recap spontaneous change is driven by the second law. This can be described as minimizing free energy. Gibbs free energy accounts for changes in entropy of your system and the surroundings. That's why it exists. It's a single variable that captures both of these things. Gibbs free energy is a state function just like enthalpy and entropy and the Gibbs free energy of reaction can be calculated from Gibbs free energy of formation or from the enthalpy or entropy of reaction. Thank you for your time.